So, I've seen a bunch of reviews. Everybody seems to think this is a great little pressure sprayer, including myself. However, as you see, this is how the sprayer tends to wind up. I like the sprayer because it had this nice wind up reel here, but the way it is designed, you cannot wind the hose up while it's on, so the hose just gets thrown over here on the side. Which, because it's such a thin and uh, flexible hose, that's not too much of a problem. Well, let's see if we can fix that today. So the reason why we can't roll the hose up while it's connected is there's no uh, way for the water uh, pressure to come out of the pump into here and so what you have to do is you have to unscrew one end of the hose here and then you got to connect that to the reel and it's not a difficult process unscrew it takes a couple seconds then you have to hook it over here and now we can roll it up I got this mainly for my wife because I thought it would be real simple being as lightweight as it is. So what I plan on trying to do is to modify this so that I can leave this connected. Because even though I went out and showed my wife how to do all this when we got it, she tried to go out and wash the car by herself and um, was unable to get it all to come out. She was saying she had, was having problems with the hose. So what the idea is going to be is we want to leave our slack about like this right here and then I want to find the center of this point of the hose and then I want to be able to attach the hose right here so then it can just wind straight up. So I found where my hose needs to be connected at for the time being. I'm just going to hook a zip tie on it. What I would like to do is maybe get some fluorescent orange paint or something and paint this where it's really easy to identify. So just looking around my shop, I found a little scrap piece of a uh, half inch plywood and I was just looking right here. If I was to maybe connect this right here, that would give something to grab that hose. Because this reel is enough reel, you could fit three or four of these hoses on, so we don't really need a lot of extra. So, I'm going to eyeball that, say about an inch and a half. Let me go over here to the saw, and I'll cut this board off real quick. Okay, so I went ahead, I had this little wider board, I ain't even measured it, it's, uh, but I ripped a piece an inch and a half and a piece two inches, and I had a little bit narrower board, I did the same thing, inch and a half and two inches. Um, thought that way it would give me a couple of options. Let me take a look and see how well this looks. So if I have that. So I think the I think that looks like that should be pretty good right there. So let me get a quick measurement on this board and I'll tell you what I'm using here. So that's about an inch and seven eighths. Uh, an inch and a half so basically an inch and a half by two inch board what I'm going to now do is uh, affix this right here at the end of the, um, the center all right so I'm just going to drill 
two holes down here in the bottom. I definitely want to put two holes in it because I um, don't want it to twist on me. So I made a hole big enough. I got some little screws right here. These are just construction screws. I might even, uh, I made the holes big enough that the screws go through nice and easy so they'll grip into the plastic here and uh, hold tight. I've got just a little bit of the head sticking up. I don't think it'll matter. So if you don't have one, don't worry about it, but I'm gonna see if I've got a counter sink close by. Okay, so I didn't save my counter sink close by, but if you don't have a counter sink, one, you probably don't need it. But two, if you just grab a larger drill bit, that will do the same as a, a countersink. You know, um, a regular countersink is good. You see now we got the head of the bolt sitting flush. So all I'm gonna do here is there's actually a seam right in this plastic. So I'm gonna take that seam and it doesn't really matter where on the round because wherever I screw this, It's going to um, put it straight flush. This, it all depends on how far your hole is from the edge as to how far this sticks up. So, that went in good and tight there. We get a close up of that. The holes are nice and countersunk. So now what it's done is it's made just this little bit of a, let's see if it focuses here. So we got a little bit of a, a catch right there. So I spin it around, nothing's hitting on it. All right, so I can see where this little tab on how to change your nozzle out might get in the way. So I'm gonna snap that off real quick. I don't know, maybe the safety police won't give me, but should know how to take a nozzle off. So that catches in there. That actually wound pretty good. I noticed the twist had it unwound about a half a turn. Um, well, I don't think that's enough to worry about. If so, I could put a little screw uh, in right here, tighten that up, but I don't think we need it. So that looks pretty good right there. So then when we want to go get ready to spray, and our hose will pull right off. I noticed that just caught a couple of times on these little hooks they have. So let's see. I got my little knife here. did right there was oh there's some more I didn't realize there was two on this side they got I, I cut them flush up here I cut these flush and there's another set of them so let me go ahead and cut those off real quick
So that was just plastic. You can probably cut that with a utility knife, a steak knife, anything. But now my reel is nice and smooth all the way around. My little block in the middle. Try this one more time. All right, I think that's going to be uh, the way we go. Um, works good for me. The only thing I would like is to possibly on this uh, end right here. I'm just going to leave the uh, zip tie on for now, um, and we'll see how well it works. And if the zip tie gets dragged off uh, on the concrete, I'll uh, squirt a little paint or something on it. But um, I think that will do it for now. The only other thing I need is to make a little modification so I can put all my nozzles up on the um, dashboard up there. So we'll take a look at that real quick. So it's got this holder that holds these uh, nozzles. Works really good. Uh, keeps the nozzles so you don't lose them. However, I've got a turbo nozzle. I might get some more nozzles in the future and there's no place to keep it. So what I'm thinking is let's throw a couple of uh, nozzle holders over here on this side. We can get at least three or four just like it is there. So what I did is I went out and bought these grommets. They're a 3 8 grommet. Um, it's a CH or GHG 1538 is the part number on it. I got them at Ace Hardware for $2.59 a piece I believe. So it's, these are quarter inch fittings, but so it's a quarter inch, but it's a three eighths grommet because it's made for a three eighths hole that's fitting good and snug on there. So I believe that just like that's good and snug, it's going to be the perfect fit. So let me find out here. Let's take this big old drill bit there out. I've got a three eighths drill bit. So I just took and uh, put it right in the center. There's the little holes that are already there. And then we poke this in. Okay, it's in the hole there. Let's see, is it going to fit? Uh oh, it doesn't look like it's going to fit in the hole. So, yep, so right now, that will not fit in the hole. So that means that we need to make a hole bigger. Okay, so that's what happens when you're not a professional modifier. So I ran and grabbed some half inch grommets. These are GHG 1550. I'm gonna re-drill these holes half inch. Maybe this time I will uh, 
try one before I do them all three. I'm going to see if it's going to work. This is a uh, brand new grommet, a little sticky. Just like the other ones are a little sticky uh, when they're brand new, but this, I'm going to just put a little silicone on it. And um, there it goes. So try it in right out, and then once that sits in there, that's going to. Um, You know, it'll make that uh, rubber grommet kind of stretch just a little bit. Pop it in, pop it out, pop it in. Works just about the same. You know, you see these here are not loose there. I have to pop in and out. So uh, definitely like that. So I'm going to go ahead and drill out these other two holes up here. I did at the top row, the bottom row. And then the one in the middle gives me three of them right there. I might go ahead. I think I'm just going to do for now because I only have the one nozzle. I'm just going to do the top one. That will help support it. And then if I do decide to do a third one, I think what I'll, I'll end up doing is on this middle row. I'll move all the way to the far right. I'll go ahead and do that one now to the far right. And that will help. Um, keep from making this plastic too thin and make it too flimsy. So hopefully you enjoyed this. Again, I did a review on one of my other videos on this pressure washer. I've used it a, a bunch now. Uh, I couldn't tell you how many things I've done. Pressure spray, concrete drive, sidewalks, boats, cars, trucks. Uh, 2000 PSI is not your 3200 PSI. But hey, you know, do you really need 3200 PSI? I've had some uh, pressure washers when I would uh, spray the uh, screen around our pool enclosure and it just burned the uh, uh, screen to where it had to be replaced. This thing, it, we cleaned the screens. Uh, it didn't tear anything up, but it's uh, got enough power, especially with the turbo nozzle, so, uh, to get a good clean. So if you want to see a little video of that, check out my channel. Uh, Thanks as always for uh, watching. Hopefully you got something out of it. I just started doing these YouTube videos, uh, trying to give back to people, you know, a little bit, you know, give them a little idea since I've gotten so many ideas off of YouTube. Uh, my other videos have gotten a lot of comments. I was surprised I never thought I would get so many comments. So go ahead and throw some comments down. I'm sure people who work on tools, when I cut those boards on the table saw, they're going to have some comments about you know, not having all the safety stuff on the table saw, but, you know, that is what it is. I um, shouldn't have to say it. Don't stick your fingers in a saw if you're using them. Uh, just like, you know, you shouldn't stick your eyeball up to the end of the nozzle. So, I uh, hope everybody enjoys it. But if you do, got a comment about it, where I cut those boards without a cross-cut sled on the machine, go ahead and drop me a comment. I'll respond to those too. Thank you again.